Welcome to Ghostly. Is Toyama Park haunted? Ghostly is a podcast that comes out every other week. In each episode, we take a ghost story or paranormal event and look into its complete history. Rebecca then gives us evidence proving that the story is real, and my job is to debate those pieces of evidence and get you, the listener, prepared to vote on if it's real or not. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, we're your host. I'm Pat. And I'm Rebecca. What's been going on, Rebecca? Well, I am uh, getting ready for fall. Yeah. Very exciting time. Winter is coming. <laughs> fall is coming. We're not <laughs> to winter yet. We are just getting winter ready is always for coming. fall. Okay, true, true. But we're getting ready for fall, everybody. It's very exciting. Uh, and do you want to tell them what we're doing this weekend? Oh, yeah. We are... Um, so in our Elgin Fringe episode, we will be doing um, an episode on Bluff City Cemetery, which is super haunted. They say it's the home of Freddy Krueger. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really sure how that connection works, but yeah. we'll find out and we will let you know. Yeah, we will let you know. And we are going uh, on an event with Hands On Paranormal, one of our favorite. Um, and we will be doing a seance. Ooh, and, and you know who's going to be there? Mahela. Mahela. Yeah. And yeah. she is going to be doing the seance, I'm guessing. And if you haven't, yeah. if you don't know who Mahela is, go back, find her episode. I did a whole interview with her and it was fantastic. Yeah. So we're really looking forward to that. We're also going to get a little walking tour of the cemetery. So I'm super excited for that. I mean, anytime you can go into a cemetery at night, it's cool. Very cool. Um, and there is going to be a story that I'm going to tell about my aunt in that cemetery oh. that is hilarious, especially if you know my aunt. So I do. I, I can't wait. Yeah, I can't this. wait either. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's that episode will be coming out in September. Yeah. And uh, and we're we're really excited. If and this is an opportunity for you to see Ghostly live at Elgin Fringe Fest on September 11th at 7:30 at the Blue Box Cafe, where we performed before to a sold out audience. Yeah, and this time there's actually going to be fewer seats because they are limiting admissions. Oh. I read, you know, try to keep everybody safe. So. Get there early. Uh, get there early if you're planning on coming. There's yeah. going to be podcasts all afternoon, so it'll be a super and podcasty fun afternoon. We'll be watching all the podcasts. So, I mean, yeah, just come out and hang out with us then. Absolutely. Uh, and then just a quick uh, other thing. We're going to have a, a Facebook Live coming up um, the end of... Um, August, August, August 26th. 26th. Yes. Uh, and we're going to be previewing our September... September 18th. September 18th uh, event um, at the Roth House. So many live events. All right. Well, yeah. So I um, got a chance to go to the Bristol Renaissance Fair. The Renaissance Fair. With all of its tomfoolery. <laughs> <laughs> that's I, I love saying that tomfoolery. Yeah. That is, that's um, classic. But yeah, so it was uh, cool. I, You know, I used to go to the Renaissance Fair all the time. And of course, 2020, they didn't have it. Mm. It's weird because up in front, they have like a sign saying voted best Renaissance Fair. And it's like 2011, 2012. And then it just skips 2020 and goes right to 2021. Oh, wow. That's yeah. weird. So, um, but it was, it was nice. It was nice to get out. Absolutely. Well, actually, I guess I did forget to say I celebrated Friday the 13th in Friday the 13th fashion by watching Friday the 13th on Crystal Lake. You just said Friday the 13th like 15 times. I did because it was super fun Friday the 13th. 
Well, you know what? We should just get right into this <laughs> we, show. We gotta, we gotta get this done. <laughs> uh, so we do have some shout outs. There are two ways to get a shout out on Ghostly. The first way is to give us a review on Apple Podcast. We always prefer the five star reviews, but we will read any and all reviews that we receive. And the second way is to either buy us a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash ghostly podcast or going to ghostlypodcast.com, our website, and hitting the buy us a coffee button in the menu. And uh, you could even become a member on there to help support us on a monthly basis. We love it. We appreciate it Absolutely. so much. Absolutely. Uh, so we we have both kinds of reviews this time. We do both kind of shout outs. Let's do it. Yeah. So you want to start off? Sure. So our first uh, review, which uh, I believe is a five star review. It is a five star. It looks star. like it. Um, from Scott Xavier. Yeah. Good friend of ours. He is. And uh, he's actually a pretty amazing performer himself. So you should, he, he is you amazing. should check him out. <laughs> uh, so we appreciate it. He says, great. I love Pat and Rebecca. Oh, well, we love you too, Scott. <laughs> Traveling home from Texas and try to listen. Amazing. Before I'd catch small parts here or there. And now I'm hooked. No office job. So my attention span is usually 10 minutes in between running work chores. Professional radio voices who I could imagine someday going big time and getting a serious XM channel. The world isn't ghostly enough. Wow. Wow. He even got like a, a Bond reference in there. It's a Bond amazing. reference? Yeah. Oh. Ghostly. The world isn't ghost. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we got another five-star review, and this is from the real Sarah Wilson, not the fake one. Not the fake the one. The real Sarah Wilson. Great mix of history and spooky. She says, I am an avid listener of spooky or true crime podcast, and this was refreshingly enjoyable. I love that show has various segments, but also can get right to the point with little veering from the main topic. I tend to lean towards the skeptic side, so I appreciate that. But I'm hoping there is something out there. So am I. Yeah. Uh, you have a new fan. All right. Thank you so much, the real Sarah Wilson. Yeah. Uh, and then our last one here, we have Brandy from Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Another five star. We have been there. Five star. Uh, all right. Love this podcast. One of the main reasons I love ghost stories is learning about the history behind it. This has the history and the ghost stories, then a debate about the facts and myths. I have been binging on this show over the last month. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brandy. We appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And we did get a buy us a coffee uh, from Lindsay D. Mm -hmm. And it says, y'all are awesome. Uh, thank you for your show. I really appreciate how the show debates. I am a history teacher and a longtime lover of ghost stories. Oh, amazing. Absolutely. Love our teachers. Yeah, I, I do too. I, I really appreciate them, especially during this time. It's been really hard for teachers you know, it's crazy that they had to go from live teaching, which is what they were used to, to all of a sudden changing all their lesson plans in the blink of an eye to virtual. Yep. And that, then that back and then something. partially and then it's endless. Yeah. <laughs> so do we have any listener mail? We do. We do. Um, so this is another anonymous listener uh, mail story uh, Ooh, that we anonymous. got. Uh, we, we got several from this listener. Uh, and so I've been kind of trying to sprinkle them out. So this is the second one that this uh, this person sent us or that I'm reading from this person. Um, and this is linked to an episode that we did that was actually one of our most popular episodes. Oh, nice. Okay. My next ghost story is from my dad. He was in his 20s and he worked a night shift. After his shift, he was driving home along the road by the country house mm. in Illinois. If you haven't listened to the country house episode, go listen. Yeah, they, that was with Graveside Paranormal. It was. They were great. Yeah. Uh, it was snowing outside, but it was not snowing hard. A little along the road, he saw a car stopped in the middle of the road. He said it was an old car. I forgot what type of car it was. He stopped his car behind the stopped car. He got out and approached the car. Inside was a young lady that was wearing a thin nightgown. She had a ring on her left finger, so my dad knew she was married. He asked the girl if everything was all right and if she needed help. She said she got into a fight with her husband and her car broke down. My dad told her that his house was not that far away and he could drive home and call a tow truck for her. 
She said that would be fine, so he pushed her car into the parking lot of the Country House restaurant. He drove home and called a tow truck and the cops because he felt something else may have been wrong with the girl. When he got back to the parking lot, the girl and the car were gone. Even more weird, the tracks of her car in the snow were gone. It was snowing lightly, so snow could not have easily covered the tracks in a short amount of time. The cops showed up and my dad had to explain she was gone and everything was fine now. A couple years uh, at a p- couple years later at a poker tournament, my dad was uh, telling people, oh, sorry, my dad said um, people were telling ghost stories. Someone told the exact same story that happened to my dad. Same location, same girl, same car, same disappearance. Wow. And we, we, we heard that story. That was absolutely one of the stories that we talked about or similar type of story um, during that episode. So here we go. Yeah. And that, another that's, version of it. That's interesting because the parking lot is in the back of the country house. So he would have had to push the car along that side road. That was probably not easy. Yeah, I don't know, I but I it's yeah. interesting. Um, so we love to hear your ghost stories, and uh, we hope you keep sending them in. Um, you can email us at info at ghostlypodcast.com or just use the contact form on ghostlypodcast.com. Or what's our favorite way, Pat? Uh, of course, to get the snail mail. And you can do that by writing to us at P.O. Box number 264 in Geneva, Illinois, 60134. And I'm not going to repeat that because you could easily just go on our website, scroll to the bottom, and we have all that information in the footer. Sounds good. All right. So we're going to skip the polls this week. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's skip the polls. Wait, why do you want to skip the polls? I mean, I just, you know, we do them every time. Do we need to do them every time? Finally. Finally, you're listening to me. Yeah, let's just skip them. Wait, now I want to read the polls, though. Why? I don't know. You tell me. Because I want to skip them. You Let's want read to... the polls. So oh. in our last episode, we talked about the devil made me do it case. That was um, what The Conjuring 3 was based on. Yes. So what did we get? Okay. So yeses were 28.6% <gasps> and noes were 71.4%. Wait, I finally won? You one. This is my first time since February. <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> wow. Uh, and overall rating was 2.79. Wow. So very much people did not believe it was haunted and they really did not even not haunted at all. Well, really. you know, I'm so glad that um, I have exposed the Warrens in <laughs> such a way that now nobody, some of the comments were really funny that um, one person said that if the Warrens told him that that the air is made of oxygen and nitrogen, he wouldn't believe them, <laughs> and he would do research to find out if it's true. All right. So, uh, you know, if you want to vote in the polls, make sure you go to ghostlypodcast.com and click on polls, and you'll find always the most recent poll and, of course, our ongoing poll uh, for our ghost reel. We'll have to check in on that maybe on Halloween, kind of see what the poll is saying for our ghost reel or not. Well, so far... In that ongoing poll, the yes is winning by a lot. (laughs) 75.7% say yes. Okay. So if you want to There is a maybe or a I'm not sure. That's true. So So if if you want to help Pat out on that before Halloween, go check that that poll out. (laughs) So usually this is the part where I do the episode intro, we call it. And in this spot, I like to tell you why we decided to do this episode. But this is purely a Rebecca episode, at least the concept part. Once I started doing some of the research, I was totally on board for this episode. Uh, Rebecca tends to pick the spookiest episodes. I don't know how you do it, Rebecca. That's what I like. So, Rebecca, why did you suggest Toyoma Park? So, I wanted to do something in Japan uh, because, number one, I love the Olympics. I'm an Olympic nerd for whatever weird reason. Mm -hmm. Always have been. Um, And that's where the Olympics were this summer. And then I also, of course, I mean, Japan is home to, I mean, one is beautiful, but also just as some of the spookiest ghost stories, you know, as someone who watches a lot of spooky movies and and, uh, just loves ghost stories, uh, there are some amazing ghost stories from from Japan. And and I wanted to, uh, to focus on that. It wasn't the ring. 
originally the ring Japanese. Is one of the scariest movies for me. Oh my gosh. Um, so I was excited, excited to have this opportunity. Uh, and then I remembered a history podcast that I listened to and I apologize because I really don't remember which one it was, uh, but they talked about what happened mm. in the Tayam- Toyama area um, that now makes people claim that it's haunted. Uh, I'm not going to give away the details. I'm going to let Pat do that. But let's just say that this might be one of our more disturbing episodes. Definitely. If you are squeamish, we will do our best to warn you before we get into it and not be too graphic. But, you know, it's one of those things that, um, you know, if you're if you're at all squeamish, you you may want to skip skip that part <laughs> a little bit. Uh, but to me, um, it's really not surprising that the somewhat re- recent history of the park um, has led to some paranormal stories. Yeah, coming out listener of it. discretion is definitely advised in this one. Um, and I, you know, sometimes we toss around that, and it's not so um, bad. But I had a lot of trouble doing the research for this one, like. I got squeamish, and that doesn't happen very often. Yeah, with some of the some of the deets, as the kids are calling it nowadays. <laughs> there you go. So, do you have a ghost story lined up for us? I do have a ghost story. All right. It's time for a spooky tale from Rebecca. Tonight is going to be interesting. We are going to see some stuff. I can feel it. We've been in Tokyo for two days, and we met this old man at lunch today who told us about the scariest place to go. It's a park called Tayoma Park, and it's only a 20-minute walk from a subway station. He said that a bunch of bodies were found there, and they are not all at rest. Shivers! Okay, we just arrived at the park, and it's beautiful. But the sun just set and the vibe is very different. It's getting a bit freaky around here. Just made it to this large hill on the eastern side of the park. The old man said this is the place that we should walk up to the top and look for spirits in the air. What was that? We just heard the creepiest noise, like someone crying or screaming. It sounded like it came from the top of the hill. Okay, it took some convincing on my part, but we've made it to the top of the hill. So far, we haven't seen anything or heard anything new, but the darkness is deep. There are lights along the path, but they aren't enough to cut through the dark. So I was sitting on a bench just trying to listen, and I heard a voice that sounded like it was some other language, not Japanese or English, It was speaking so fast and urgently and in pain. I just felt such sadness wash over me. They were begging for my help. I could just feel it. I stood up with tears on my face, just saying, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. We left soon after, and now I'm sitting in our hostel, just wondering, what happened to these people that their souls are in such torment? Wow. Okay. So uh, I like that it's kind of like diary style. Thank your, you. Your ghost story. Is that what you were going for? Yeah, kind of like tweets almost a little bit. Oh, tweets on the Twitter. On the Twitter. Uh, yeah. Ghostly is on Twitter, by the way. Oh. <laughs> it's at Ghostly Podcast. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Uh, or YouTube. Um, there's definitely, you can find a lot of great YouTube videos out there of people doing paranormal uh, explorations of the park. And this is kind of uh, an homage to that. Awesome. All right. Well, let's take a break and then we will get to the history. Sounds good. Pat, what do creepy stories, funny ghost memes, and inside ghostly information have in common? Um, my life. <laughs> well, yes, but <laughs> no, it's also Ghostly Society on Facebook. Oh, yeah. I mean, that too, of course. I, but aren't all ghostly listeners in ghostly society? Not yet. What? I mean, that means that they're missing out on all my jokes. Yeah, they are. And missing out on chatting and sharing with other listeners and us, of course. We love talking to our listeners. 
If you haven't yet, you should consider joining our private group on Facebook called Ghostly Society. Let's hope now they will. Unless they're a woman in white. Uh-oh. All right, we are back. So Toyoma Park is the land that surrounds Toyoma Castle in Toyoma City. (laughs) You know, they're very original with the naming, I think. So go with a theme. Absolutely. Um, This is a weird one, though, because unlike American history, it's not easy for me to find a starting point for this episode. So Japan has such a long history that we had to really dive into the past to fully grasp the history of this land and this park. I always like stuff that predates, um, you know, like 1776 uh, America, you know, mm-hmm. um, because it's just always so interesting. It's it's hard to take myself into that time period, you know. But uh, Toyoma Castle was built in 1543, so I went to the Renaissance Fair. That's medieval. Yes. This is medieval times right there. It is. Nice. Um, in those days, much like the rest of the world, Japan was in constant struggles. There were many different clans and land was constantly switching hands. In this castle, there were many different occupants. And I'm not, I'm not going to go through all of them, partly because I can't pronounce most of the names. But uh, an, another thing is it's like... Like these people will have held it for a year or two years and then it went to somebody else and then they, this group dissolved into something else and it's just, it's really confusing. So I'm not going to get into all that. But a lot of the original castle was burnt down in a fire in 1609. It was rebuilt, but in 1858, there was a huge earthquake that destroyed many of the structures of the castle. And what survived was then destroyed by the Japanese government in 1871. Okay, so is there a castle there at all now? or There is, there is. Okay. Uh, when you look at pictures of modern-day Toyoma Park, it looks very peaceful. The Japanese structure adds to its zen-like feel. Uh, it was once a Dioma garden, which uh, Dioma were actually like these... Um, clan leaders or they call them like lords um but they were like pretty evil <laughs> though so uh Dioma garden and uh had one of the largest ponds in all of traditional japan but over the last 200 years the pond has slowly dried up and is now completely non-existent mm. the original pond uh Tayoma park is a popular spot for cherry blossom viewing in the spring i know you like cherry blossom i do so beautiful it is definitely uh it is again the home of Toyoma castle which was reconstructed again in 1954 so much of the park was redone after world war ii the original castle was about six times larger than the one that is there now so from 18 the 1850s all the way into 1954. So the, about 100 years. Yeah, the castle was pretty much non-existent. Gotcha. Or it was in some kind of form that was not usable. Gotcha. Um, here is where things get really dark. Um, oh. <laughs> so Toyoma has a very dark history. You see, Toyoma Park sits on the land that held a number of hospitals during World War II. What now seems like a beautiful park saw a lot of bad things throughout its long history, but nothing as bad as what allegedly happened during World War II, or shortly before World War II. During World War II, both sides were looking for advantages over the other side. That's where we developed the atomic bomb. Yeah, there was a race for that. Yeah, absolutely. But there were other things being worked on to create a new way to defeat your enemies. Japan had a secret research group that had many names. 
One was the Army Epidemic Prevention Research Laboratory, which seems like it would be a good thing, right? Um, But it wasn't. Uh, They experimented with biological and chemical warfare. Now, here is the spot where I'm going to get into some of the details of this. Definitely, if you are squeamish, you would want to turn away at this point. Yeah. Maybe just fast forward 10, 15 minutes. That's maybe. what I'm thinking. Listener discretion advised. In 1936, the Army Epidemic Prevention Research Laboratory became what was called Unit 731. Some of the experimentations that they did were so horrific. They experimented on humans, depriving people of food or water and recording what happened to the body. But also, they would perform these weird surgeries on what they considered to be prisoners. Also, they would deliberately infect them with plague bacteria, you know, bubonic plague? Yep. uh, And other microbes. When they were done, they would usually incinerate the bodies. Researchers in Unit 731 also published some of their results in peer-reviewed journals, writing as though the research had been conducted on non-human primates called Manchurian monkeys or long-tailed monkeys. Mm. Uh, The test subjects were selected to give a wide cross-section of the population and included common criminals, captured bandits, anti-Japanese partisans political prisoners, the homeless, and mentally handicapped, and also people rounded up by the Kempieti military police for alleged suspicious activities. They included infants, men, the elderly, and pregnant women. The members of the unit included approximately 300 researchers, including doctors and bacteriologists. Prisoners had limbs amputated in order to study blood loss. Those limbs that they removed were sometimes reattached to the opposite side of the body. Some prisoners had their stomachs surgically removed and the esophagus reattached to the intestines. Unit 731 is directly responsible for tens of thousands of Chinese deaths during World War II with the bubonic plague typhoid, and anthrax. Wow. And at the end of World War II, they had planned to bring these biological weapons to San Diego. It actually had a scheduled date of September 22nd, 1945, but the Japanese surrendered five weeks earlier. There's a lot more horrific details. If you want to find out more, just Google Unit 731. Anyways, the reason I brought this up in this episode is because it's alleged that Unit 731 dumped a lot of the bodies of their prisoners in what is now Toyoma Park. It's a very dark part of our history that I even have trouble reading. Yeah, this is this is what I had uh, heard about um, that really made me, you know, think, wow, you know, this is something that you, you we don't always talk about. There's not a lot, there's, I mean, we have details, know that a lot of this has never been confirmed by um, the Japanese government, but there was um, a nurse who worked in the unit that when she was in her 80s, came out and um, said that she had worked there, confirmed some of these things, and and did confirm that they bodied or buried bodies in the park. Uh, and part of that is because there were body, there were skeletons dug up when they were doing like construction or something mm-hmm. in the park um, uh, a few decades ago. I want to say in like the eighties or something. Um, and so then people wondered, hey, <laughs> where did these bodies come from? And so mm. I think that kind of eventually then, you know, kind of came out or she said anyways. that Weird bodies with like like limbs attached to different areas and stuff. So. Yeah. Or just parts of bodies, oh you know. God. Yeah. That's so horrific. It's like, yeah. And I, you know, I certainly don't think that they've excavated the whole park. 
You know, no. they just kind of again, it's it's so it's it's never been officially confirmed. Not super official. No, not super official. <laughs> but it is, you know, there is testimony that that it did happen. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it you know, like I I've studied World War II, but most of the time when you study World War II, you look at the Germans and stuff. You don't really look at um, anybody else doing such evil stuff like that. Yeah, we focus a lot on, in America, we focus a lot on the European yeah. part of the, the war um, and not as much on the... Uh, the, the Japanese and the, or even the Italian or, you know, in Africa. I mean, there's so yeah. many other places. I mean, it was a world war. Um, and, you know, and I want to make sure I say, you know, now the Japanese people are seriously probably the most, some of the most peaceful in a lot of ways of everybody because they really, I think, after this, realize how horrific so many things were and what horrors can happen in war. Um, but, uh, but we shouldn't, uh, ignore history either. Well, I had read, uh, like a piece where they were desensitized, um, to the, um, the suffering that they were causing these people because they were scientists that had done a lot of experimentation on animals and then monkeys. And then, you know, it's like doing it on people was just one step forward. You know. Oh yeah. Well, there's that's how it works, and and still works in some places. Um, you know where, you know when you dehumanize a set of people, then all of a sudden it becomes easier to treat them in horrific ways. Yeah, and before they were brought as prisoners, you know, like, um, they were well, they were prisoners, but before they were brought to Unit Seven Three One, they were always treated very well. They were given very good food, and also they were allowed to drink alcohol sometimes. Wow. And yeah, so it was very weird how well they treated them until that point, because their experimentation, they wanted to prove that it was nothing else that you know caused any of this stuff. Yeah, very weird. It's, I mean, certainly... Um, you know, the concentration camps, the systematic decimation of an entire population or attempted, uh, you know, um, decimation of an entire population is really bad, but there or, or is is the worst part of all of this. But just like they did crazy medical experiments, so did the Japanese. You know, it happened yeah. in both, both both places and uh, definitely bad. Yeah. All right. Well, I think On I need a break note. after that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and when we return, we can go over the debate. We'll get into some spooky stuff. Yeah. Hey, guys. What I've learned over the last couple of years is the key to a really good podcast is two things. Getting plenty of Apple podcast reviews and lots of caffeine. You can help us with both of those. Head over to Apple Podcast, write us a review, and if you feel up to it, you could even buy us a cup of coffee. You can go to buymeacoffee.com slash ghostlypodcast, or just go to ghostlypodcast.com and click on the Buy Us Coffee. You can sign up for a membership or a one-time donation to us. It would really be appreciated. back and it's kind of hard to move forward from such a um, dark history and uh, the, the events of unit 731 are well documented um, so 
That is real stuff. It is real stuff. It is not, there's no doubt about it. The only thing that there's supposedly doubt about is if the bodies are buried there, but yet yeah. we also have proof that that is also true. We have some <laughs> proof. Some, some proof. And uh, I would like to also apologize for our pronunciation of certain things. <laughs> We're trying. Um, <laughs> but I don't think you listen to Ghostly for its pron- uh, pronunciation of, of terminology. <laughs> we, we definitely, we try. <laughs> we try. Yeah. All right, Rebecca, what do you got for me? All right, here we go. Our first piece of evidence. Throughout the years, locals and bold visitors have reported hearing a disembodied male voice violently sobbing from the top of the park's small hill, Hakon Yama, which hopefully I pronounced correctly. That's the name of the hill? That's the name of the hill. It's okay. sometimes written as one word, sometimes as two. Anyways, um, but that's the, probably the most common report. Okay. Is that people hear a male voice crying from the top of the hill. Hmm. What does a disembodied voice sound like? It just it means like you're hearing a voice, but you don't see a body. Okay, okay. So I'm just trying to, you, you know, know. It's spooky. Think yeah. spooky. Mm, you know, like crying. I, mm. I'm not. I can't. I'm not going to act it out. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that there's a lot of monkeys and stuff like that in this area. And I know that monkeys can, you know, like when they make noises, it, it can sound like they're distant or far away. So that's what I'm going to say that this is. It's probably some kind of monkey-ish thing. Interesting. I have not heard that as yeah. a a thing uh, there, um, but okay. Uh, like I said, this is, to me, I, I, did, um, I did read one report, though I, there wasn't a name attached to it, so I, I didn't include it, but I, I did report. I hear a report, uh, read a report, I should say, from someone who, you know, was exploring the park, was at the bottom of it, of the hill, and, and heard crying coming from the top of the hill. But then when they got up there, there wasn't anybody there. So, again, I suppose it could be someone is up there crying and you just don't see them. So, you know, but it seems weird that it's pretty common and uh, there's been many reports of it. Well, my thing, too, is that I... Even though the deeds of Unit 731, well documented, they did not document any spot where they buried bodies. And in fact, most of the time they incinerated those bodies. So I I don't know if it could be haunted because of the bodies of these things. So when we're looking at this, as far as the history goes, I am not sure that they did, even though... There is some evidence, but it's very little evidence that they did. Well, there there have been skeletons found in the park. Like yes. that is for sure. Um, and again, a nurse who had worked as part of the unit um, said that they were bodies from Unit 731. Um, so, you know, again, I think there's a decent connection between them. Maybe. Um, but, you know, the bodies that they found were nowhere near the numbers that would need to have been from this 731 thing. So, I mean, it, it was a castle and the castle could have had a graveyard next to it. And I'm not saying that that doesn't make it haunted. I'm just saying that I don't know if it's haunted because of that. So when we're doing this, I'm trying to take myself away from that horrific part of their history. Yeah. Yeah. So what would your rating be for this one? I'm going to go one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give it a seven. Okay, a This seven. seems to be a pretty popular story. Um, yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go but seven. But see, to me, the, the popularity of the story means nothing because that just means more people are looking for that. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Another piece of evidence. So a reporter from Rocket News named Royo traveled to the park to explore it, documented his journey. On his way, he interviewed a man who lives near the park. And he told Royo that he himself, the man who Royo was interviewing, that he himself, while walking in the park on a different night, had seen a hitodama which is basically a like will-o'-the-wisp phantasm, like a, a floating orb. Mm. Ah, we know we love oh, orbs. Yeah. Um, basically formed when a soul leaves a body. So 
there have been m- many reports of people seeing orbish or floating balls of light, but they call them these hitodo- hitodamas that are, you know, again, supposedly the soul leaving the body. Mm. Um, so this this reporter did interview someone who claimed to have seen one. Uh, and this is not the only report of that, but that's a specific instance I could find of it. So my my first thought with this is if you were not from the area and you came here and you saw a bunch of lightning bugs or fireflies, as they're called in some areas, I actually like fireflies better, but I call them lightning bugs. Um, But if you saw a bunch of them from a distance, I think you'd be a little freaked out, not not knowing what they are. Insects can... Why are you giving me that look? (laughs) (laughs) I mean... But like lightning bugs don't like fly in form in a ball formation and like from a distance it can. And then, like, who doesn't know about lightning bugs? In different parts of the world, they don't know about lightning bugs or fireflies. <laughs> Do they know it's Christmas time? <laughs> Do they, Do they know, know it's the lightning, lightning bugs? bugs? <laughs> <laughs> So that's what I'm going with. That's what it sounds like to me. A willow the wisp <laughs> <laughs> sounds like it could be a form of a lightning bug. Okay. All right. Yeah. Especially uh, around all those cherry blossoms. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, they would probably love the cherry blossoms, I would imagine. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Well, uh, so what would you rate this then? I'm going to go zero on this one. <laughs> okay. I'm so confident in my lightning bug firefly approach. Yeah. Hey, I won the last one. So, okay. You're yeah. definitely, you know, feeling real strong. Huh? Usually I win more than one in a row. So <laughs> I see. I see. Well, I'm actually going to give this one an eight because it is eight. A, a, wow. a report from from a person, um, you know, an actual actual report. And uh, and again, not the only one um, that I, I read about. Certainly a common thing to see these orbs of light um, that um, that they believe our souls leaving the body. Okay. All right. So uh, our next evidence is, okay, All this is all <laughs> I could find on this piece of evidence. It's reported on many websites, but there is no more detail given than this. Now, part of this could be because we're researching in a foreign language and sometimes Google Translate, you know. Anyways, all it says is... <laughs> The spirit of a man who committed suicide appears in the toilet in the park. And I know we shouldn't laugh about suicide. I'm so sorry. Trigger warning. Um, what is this, Harry late. Potter or something? <laughs> it's Moaning Myrtle is mm-hmm. in in the park. Um, so again, I have no information about who this is, how it happened, why they think it's that person, who's seen the person, what they saw. Um, I think it's the spirit of sushi gone by. <laughs> <laughs> the past sushi that was eaten. I, I come on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. It's one of the the claims. So, I, I, but know, I don't know how this spirit like looks. I no details at all except for he just is a in a toilet. Yep. And how do we even know he's a man? I don't. Well, obviously, he looks like a man. I don't know. We don't know anything. It's got well, no that's details. that's what they say. No, no, no. Zero, <laughs> zero, zero. <laughs> All right, I'll give this one a four. Uh, pretty weak. You don't believe in the the toilet <laughs> The man? toilet ghost? No, I, I, I'm a little... Sus- again, is it in so several reports? Yes, but again, no more details given, so a little bit difficult. Now, I will also say, I forgot to say this when we started this out, um, when you look up most haunted Japan, I mean, there are so many scary stories, um, but this this park is always listed, yeah. always listed. Always on the top of the list. Always on the top of the list. And so is uh, so it is also uh, sometimes does it show up on international most haunted mm, lists. Okay. So again, lots of reports uh, of these things. But again, this of one- the, Of the toilet man. I could not find a whole lot. On this one. All <laughs> well, right. Because I have no details to go off of, <laughs> I'm going to have to go zero. You're going zero. Okay. Like, we don't say that he showed up in camera photography or that right. he materialized in front of somebody. We, we don't say anything else. Just he's a man that committed suicide. I don't know how they knew he committed suicide, too. No, I don't know. Again, it could be 
a little bit of limited with my my re- research. Um, you know, I say you should learn to speak Japanese. I, <laughs> it's also possible. <laughs> uh, all right. Last piece of evidence for our episode today. Um, there are reports of more disembodied voices throughout uh. the park, not just on top of the hill, but throughout the park, speaking in foreign languages. Mm. And I think part of that is because the victims of the unit were allegedly from all sorts of, of places. You know, there were Japanese, but there were also Chinese, Mongolian, Russian, um, Europeans. Uh, so supposedly, you know, there's these cries, these, vo- you know, talking um, voices that are um, speaking in, in other other languages. I mean, again, this is one of those things that there's not many details about for me to go off of. So I, I can't allege to understand where this comes from at all. Um, I didn't hear any, you know, EVPs or anything like that of this. So it, it's really hard for me to go off of anything. There is no real evidence here, just that people are saying this. And again, I really believe the monkeys um, could be making sounds that ver- sound very much like someone speaking in a foreign language. Hmm. I, I've watched some videos. I have not seen monkeys. Um, it's Japan. There's monkeys. Okay. Okay. But there, uh, but I will also say that there, I did watch several videos and while a few, you know, kind of claimed to maybe there was like a creepy guy in the background in one of them and, and maybe they heard some things. Um, I did not hear foreign language, um, in any of the videos that I watch. However, again, maybe videos that I wasn't able to see or you know didn't show up for me so um you know yeah sometimes when i'm in chicago mm-hmm. i'll be sitting there and i'll hear a bunch of foreign <laughs> languages <laughs> well this is always at night we're talking about this sometimes i hear it in chicago day. at night too <laughs> <laughs> all kinds of languages <laughs> in a park where there's no one around you uh I can't say for sure, but I have heard some when I was in Water Tower, uh, the little park area around well, Water Tower. Well, sure, park. that's right in downtown where there's lots of people. Yeah, a lot of foreign languages yes, too going but around. This there. is so. This is definitely these are reports that happen at night during the day. Everyone says it is a beautiful place. It, it looks really beautiful, beautiful in the pictures. Oh man, I would love one, to visit there. Wonderful place. And would you? Then would you night, like camp crazy. out there? I don't know about camping. I'm not sure if you're allowed to camp. But if you were allowed to, if the Japanese government gave you permission, uh, do you think you would spend the night there? I don't know. That I would. sounds scary. I would, except for the monkeys. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't mind uh, visiting, um, but I don't know about spending the whole night. I'd want to be able to leave if I needed to. <sighs> Yeah, you just need your cell phone signal and you're fine. <laughs> so what would you rate the disembodied foreign language voices? I have really nothing to go on here except that people report it and it's foreign languages. And also with the foreign languages, I think it's easier to hear sounds that sound like it because you can't make it out and you just claim it's a foreign language. So. Interesting. I, I'm going to go zero on this one because there's not enough information to do any kind of debate or figure out any kind of thing against it. So Okay, I'm going to go with a six on this one. All right. Because, um, again, I, it is something that people report, though uh, it's not as common as the particular male voice that is reported on the Hill. Mm. Oh, so these this is not a male voice then? This is could be male voice, could be female. Could just, be children. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just different voices. Uh, I, again, I have n- no information on this. It's just, <laughs> it's very vague. So what is your overall rating, Rebecca? So my overall rating is going to be a six. A six? Yeah, it's a little lower than I thought it was going to be. I mean... I don't know. I'd almost go a six and a half if we did halves anymore. But um, I mean, here's the thing. It's it's definitely a cre- creepy place. I do think that. Um, I do think that it's very likely there are some spirits there that are 
maybe disturbed. And, and so there, there could be some things that happen. I just, it was hard to find a ton of hard evidence on it. Mm. So um, that keeps me from going up into those upper seven and eights, nines, you gotcha. know, level. Um, how about you? I'm gonna, rating. I'm gonna go a one on this one. Um, yeah, I just there's there's not enough to really go on and make it anything more than that. But it's so vague that I have to give it a one because I don't have all the details to be able to figure out what what they were talking about or what it could possibly be. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So that brings us to our closing arguments. This is our last chance to convince you to vote our way. We are each given one minute of uninterrupted time because, as we all know, Rebecca likes to cheat at this. Hey. Um, And we will time each other on our cell phones to keep each other honest, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Rebecca, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. And go. All right. So I do believe that Toyama Park is haunted. I do believe that bodies buried there, uh, that they did bury some of the bodies from Unit 731. Um, there's just, you know, I, I, it makes sense to me. The evidence makes sense to me. It makes sense to me that those bodies would bring, um, spirits that are not at rest, uh, and that it would make sense that people, um, if you're there, especially in the night when, when it's easier to hear things, um, would hear, uh, a voice, um, would hear, Voices would maybe see, you know, these these spirit um, spirits being released uh, or or being being uh, in the area. Um, I just, it's not strong, but I think it's possible. Oh, I did it! I made it. Uh, kind of. You were kind of like a second <laughs> over there, but okay. All right, are you ready? Yes. Okay, then go. All right, so I don't usually do this, but in my closing argument, I'm going to bring up Rebecca's closing argument. Usually I have my own separate thing, and I don't try to challenge anything that she says. But what she is saying is based upon a lot lot of assumptions. It's assuming that the bodies were buried there. It's assuming that they would then manifest into ghosts. It's assuming that all these things are happening and... um. I just don't think that there's evidence. If we actually look at the evidence, it's very flawed. There is only, in the four pieces of evidence that Rebecca uh, gave me, only two of them even had anything to go off of. The other two had nothing. So I do not believe just because there was this tragic event that it could be this. And that's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you made it. Yeah. I had five seconds left. Uh-huh. I feel <laughs> like you cut that a little short, but all right. Well, I saw that I had five seconds left and I wanted to leave it at five seconds. <laughs> so I want to thank you so much for listening. Please share us with your friends and family as word of mouth is our best form of advertisement. I was just reading something how a podcast asked each person to ask one person to listen. And they grew so fast because of this. That would be amazing. So if you could just tell one person even about Ghostly. It's the right time of year, right? You know, you might even have to help them download it on their phone because some people don't know what podcasts are and don't understand how to listen to them. Yeah. But once they do, they're hooked. Absolutely. So uh, remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so yet or follow or whatever it's called and Smash. smash that like button. Yeah. Um, we will be talking about the Roth House on the next episode that comes out on September 1st. Yeah, we're going to get you ready to uh, maybe join us at the live event yes. later in September. And we will have Graveside Paranormal uh, with us and also the owner of the Roth House. We're going to be doing an interview with him yeah. on our Facebook Live, which um, is going to become an episode here. So Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah, I can't wait. And uh, we have a lot of stuff planned for you guys. Um, we are going to be doing the Bluff City Cemetery at Elgin Fringe, and that will become an episode as well for those that cannot attend since they're limiting how many people can be there. 
We would still love the story of the Bluff City Cemetery to get out there, and we're going to talk about our experiences during the seance and everything. And I want to make an announcement here. (gasps) Since we were talking about a castle in here, Mm. uh, in October, we've decided to go things a, a little different. We are going to try to do an episode every single week in October. Uh, Last time we weren't able to do it because of my health issues, Um, but this time I believe we're going to be able to do it. Well, fingers crossed, we hope. We're not going to do something where we debated at the very last episode. We're going to do full episodes each and every week, and we will be talking about haunted castles. Ooh, haunted castles. (laughs) Castles are spooky to begin with. Right? And you mix in that, you know, there could be some kind of ghost there. That's extra creepy. Interesting. So that's how we're going to get you ready for your Halloween or Samhain or whatever it is that you celebrate during that time. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun, a lot of spooky things going on. Uh, we love it, so uh, we can't wait to record all these uh, these episodes. Oh, and if you are a Walking Dead fan, just a quick mm. plug: uh, it comes out uh, next week. It's kind of we're kind of on an off schedule for this last partial season or whatever it is that we're doing right now uh but uh pat and i if you don't know do a walking dead fan cast podcast yeah on the dvmpe network um and that will be coming out uh we'll start doing some weekly episodes with that coming up uh next week i think we start i believe it is yeah so uh, to find that you just do a search on any podcast player for the walking dead dvmpe David yep. Vox Mullen Produ- um, Production Empire. Yes. Uh, so. Or just uh, look on social media. You'll find us. Walking yeah, Dead. absolutely. And maybe even Rebecca can post a link to it in Ghostly. I will try to do that. All yes. right. Well, until next time, stay ghostly. Bye. <laughs>